the Charles Schultz philosophy. The following is the philosophy of Charles Schultz, the creator of the Peanuts comic strip. You don't have to actually answer these six questions. Just ponder on them. First, name the five wealthiest people in the world. Second, name the last five Heisman Trophy winners. Third, name the last five winners of the Miss American pageant. Fourth, Name 10 people who have won the Nobel or Pulitzer Prize. Five, name the last half dozen Academy Award winners for Best Actor or Actress. Number six, name the last decade's worth of the World Series winners. I can't get past number three, but how did you do? The point is, none of us remember the headlines of yesterday. These people were not second-rate achievers. They are and were the best in their fields at their day. But the applause dies. Awards tarnish. Achievements are forgotten. Accolades and certificates are buried with their owners. Good morning, folks. I'm Troy Wilson. If this is your first time being with us, welcome. If you've already become a part of our weekly 10 Minutes of Worship and Renewal of the Spirit, welcome back and thank you for your continued support. Here's another short quiz. See how you do on this one. List a few teachers who aided your journey through school. Name three friends who have helped you through a difficult time. I can name a lot more. Name five people who have taught you something worthwhile. Number four, think of three people who have made you feel appreciated and special. Number five, think of five people you enjoy spending time with. That's a lot easier, huh? The lesson in this is the people who make and have made a difference in your life are not the ones with the most credentials, the most money, or the most awards. They simply are the ones who care the most. That jersey you wear or some of your children wear with that sports figure's name on it, they're not going to be there when your time of need arrives. The money you spent buying it is never coming back to you. Those $400 game or concert tickets you purchase will never bring you a return on your investment. And the only lives it will make better is the millionaires of whom you gave your hard-earned money to. Now, I'm not saying entertainment is wrong, but we need to invest more in caring than we do entertainment, folks. When I was a little boy, I can remember my daddy taking me to see his Aunt Irene, which would have been my great aunt. Aunt Irene was a devout Christian widow lady. Her husband, Uncle Barney, who was a minister, had passed years before. I don't remember him at all, but I do remember my daddy speaking well of Uncle Barney. And Irene lived in a small two-room old camper trailer, a faded red and white in color, and it was in the backyard of one of her children. And Irene seemed very happy and content with what God had provided her with, never complained, just constantly gave praise to an almighty God. Now, this is sort of weird. But what I remember most about our visits with Aunt Irene was sitting there on the end table next to her old worn couch was a framed short poem, and it was printed on blue velvet paper with raised gold calligraphy lettering. The poem read this, Only one life twill soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. It was written by Charles Thomas Studd, often known as C.T. Studd, born December 2nd, 1860. C.T. spent a life as a British missionary, mostly in China and India, but also other parts of the world, spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. My friend, the sharing of this poem by Aunt Irene burned an image of it into my brain, which has lasted for over 60 years. Upon research for today's message, I learned this short poem has reached around the entire globe many times over. But even more amazing, most people don't have a clue who the author of the poem was or ever heard the name C.T. Studd. What am I saying? I'm saying it is the caring of the person who wrote such a poem which lasted, 
not the notoriety of the person himself. Folks, what it's actually saying, what is done for Christ will last, means what is done on behalf of Jesus Christ will last. Let me read it to you as we find it in Matthew 20, verse 40. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. It is amazing to me that this verse of scripture follows the parable of the talents given to the three servants. Remember, one, three, and five talents. Talents were given them by the master or king who expected a return on his investments. As with all parables given by Jesus, this one can be interpreted many ways. So with that said, let me point out a couple of things which really stand out. Number one, the talents were not given as in here, take this gift, they're yours to just do with as you please. No, this giving was a loan or an advance to be used as a tool for increase. If we replace the word talents with the word blessing, then it becomes easier to understand why the master became so upset with the servant who returned his blessings without any increase. So offended by this servant, we find these words in Matthew chapter 25, verses 28 through 30. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But for him that hath not shall be taken away, and even that which he hath. Now, folks, listen to this one. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Many misconstrue Matthew 25 as God saying we need to make a lot of money. But what it really said here, God blesses us so we can bless others. Let me say that again. God blesses us, blesses us, gives us talents so we can bless others. If God shows us on five separate occasions this week how much he cares about us, we need to show others on at least five separate occasions how much we care about them. If God blesses us monetarily this week, we need to bless others monetarily this week. And hopefully the ones you bless will continue spreading the blessings to others. If not, then verse 30 is especially for them. We're going to read it again. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Folks, when we pray for and receive blessings, it is important to remember blessings were designed to go through us and not just to us. Bless others by showing you care. Bless others by empathizing with their pain. Bless others by being a friend and lending an ear. Bless others when they are in need. Bless the cause of Jesus Christ by sharing the birth, life, and his resurrection. If you were not able to go, bless those who are willing and able to go on your behalf. Amen? Somebody say amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for being an all-caring God, one who has blessed us with an abundance. Blessed us, dear God, so we may bless others. May we always remember what we have is on loan from you. A loan, dear God, sent to us so we might be a blessing to others. In Jesus' holy name, we thank you for all things. Amen.